Hello. Let's see um, another view on what is uh, going to change the world. Uh, the opportunity of uh, actually looking at the history of the world is, is wonderful. Uh, except, of course, uh, the problem is that nature, as we know it, doesn't really care. 99% uh, of the species that have ever lived are extinct. And it is an ugly sight. We uh, have to understand that we are possibly, just possibly, the first of the species who have the power of avoid extinction if we take that choice, if we really want to. Uh, we have started our 10,000-year-old journey in uh, embracing technology, in embracing the power of changing our destiny. And this accumulation of change has been almost invisible at the beginning. Um, whatever number of periods it took to double what we could do, and whatever, whatever it, you would measure, population, food, uh, territories that uh, the human species was uh, occupying, uh, these doublings were almost imperceptible at the beginning. And, and still, when new things, new phenomena uh, arise, are difficult to understand because what we measure can have errors can have mistakes, and at the beginning, uh, it will be just a big confusion. It takes a lot of belief in what is going on in order to realize beforehand until everybody starts to wake up and see, hey, this is big, something is really going on, when it breaks through uh, those initial doublings and starts to become more explicitly, more visibly exponential. Um, Biology is based on physics, and physics is based uh, in uh, how we f see things around us, mostly in linear changes. So we um, don't realize how powerful the exponential function is. And we have to uh, really get around understanding it better, uh, because our civilization is uh, being impacted by it more and more. As we accumulate knowledge, we are able to answer more questions. And these answers are nothing but building blocks through which we build vastly more numerous questions that extend our knowledge, extend our understanding. Interestingly enough, for those who have fun in this quest for knowledge, there is an ever-widening gap between the answers that we can give and the new questions that we are empowered to ask. The changes that our knowledge have brought on the planet started really with agriculture. When we started uh, actively uh, sticking seeds in the ground, and then came industrial revolution, when we reorganized how uh, the physical products around us needed to be made and tried and optimized the processes behind them. And of course, it changed again in the middle of the last century when the knowledge revolution arrived and we started to automate the collection, analysis, synthesis, and acting upon of knowledge. These changes have been very, very rapid. And everybody in the world have been impacted by these changes, so much so that almost everywhere, the majority of us are spending our working lives, and many of us also our personal lives, in what we call uh, work, and it is knowledge gathering, knowledge acquisition, and knowledge transformation. This is the Anthropocene, a geological era defined by human presence on the planet, where in the eye blink, in geological and even biological terms, in merely 10,000 years we went from occupying in terms of 
terrestrial vertebrate biomass. Humans are cattle or pets from 1% of this to 98% of this. However, even the exponential function cannot go beyond 100% in a planet with limited resources. And we will soon, hopefully, necessarily expand beyond the limitations of this single planet we have on other planets, on other stars. But until that happens, we must make sure that what we do doesn't become irreversibly unsustainable, which would bring us to join the 99% of the species in extinction. And as we know, nature wouldn't care. Nature would not actually mind. The most powerful current manifestation of our changes in the knowledge gathering has obviously been uh, in the past 30, 40 years for those who knew, and in the past, let's say, 10, 15 years for those who woke up more recently, the internet, that gave us access to information, gave us access to knowledge with such immediacy that we could know everything. So much so that we could concentrate not on the information that we needed to uh, gather with great effort when we went to libraries physically to browse through books and index cards, but the relationships between those uh, bases of knowledge which raised the bar. And as we are uh, frequently tempted to do, we have been empowered by this to greatly accelerate our experiments in seeing what could be interesting, important, valuable that we could derive from this raised bar of knowledge, analysis, synthesis, and acting upon, which has been the internet bubble of startups. Many of us have participated in it, and now it's not that it finished, it once again raised the bar. New internet startups are uh, being born every day. And regardless of the financial crisis, they are driving entrepreneurs uh, to transform the society around us. Entrenched interests can do nothing to make bits and bytes less copyable in the future. You can legislate as much as you want. Music is going to be digital and universally accessible. Movies are digital and they are going to be universally accessible. And the most recent uh, accelerated adoption of uh, electronic book technologies are completing this circle of sucking into the digital realm our knowledge, which is uh, of course, the fundamental goal of uh, one of the great practitioners uh, in the enterprise uh, part of this adventure. And it's not that we are, one of, uh, we are done, of course. We, we will have a lot of other things to do, but I posit that an important part of our attention is going to move beyond in understanding much more about the world that is around us with the devices that used to be relegated to uh, depend on humans to give them input through keyboards, uh, to know about the world, to the new device generations, starting with the mobile phones that all of us have in our pockets, that have plenty full of sensors that we call spines, because they know where they are, when they are, they know and learn about the world, and which constitute the next generation of networks called the Internet of Things. That is which will allow us to know everything. And we can start trying to understand what is going to be uh, the nature of these new networks and new devices. They are all around us already. Uh, this very humble vacuum cleaner knows where the power socket is and can go and find it without you having to actually uh, plug it in to be recharging, contrary to your mobile phone, for example. 
as the sensors and the sensations of these devices are going to extend, it will be extremely important for them to actually realize not only what are the things, but what are the humans, what are the beings uh, around them, what are not only our physical positions, but also what are our emotional states. They will have and develop empathy and awareness, and we will have and develop empathy and awareness towards them in return. They will be autonomous. Autonomous cars will be a fundamentally important transformative element of our Internet of Things networks, which are going to incredibly increase the efficiency of our societies, where cars are not going to stop and do nothing for 90% of their time, but we will be able and have a choice either to have 10 times as many trips, for example, how many mothers today are driving all the time, their children everywhere, and we will be totally uh, trusting towards these cars to drive our sons and daughters anywhere we want after school. They will be perfectly safe, much more safer uh, than uh, whatever a human driver could achieve. And the other choice is going to be to have just 10 times fewer cars. Electric cars are going to be enabled by this because we won't have any more problems uh, with recharging the batteries. From ownership, we will go almost seamlessly to access. And if we want, we can actually generalize and go beyond. Think if we could extend this and understand how energy systems can become smarter, how our health can be better managed by devices that understand, communicate, and recommend decisions that we very likely would take on. What if even our tools of production could take part in this, and rather than sending half a planet away, a production order that takes six months to come back, to do three times as much of any gadget or widget that has to sit on shelves to do nothing for our advertising campaign to kick in and hopefully people to buy, we could produce based on order in our own houses or in our blocks as we have been producing and reproducing information through our copying machines for bits, which used to be called computers, we are going to be embracing copying machines for atoms. What if your houses were the same as your cars are going to be, and you didn't need to own them anymore? You could just access houses, access food, and understand how this, are, this is going to impact everyday life in a fundamental manner is a very, very worthy exercise for all of you to start thinking about today, because these exponentials are already working, and working, and working hard, doubling in size below the limit of the popular press. You belong to a very privileged crowd of those who have the power to know today, and then you will be able and start adapting to a future that is happening already. We are understanding the planet at the level of granularity that we need in order to survive. We cannot simply afford the inefficiencies that we have suffered for now. And as we grow the originality and the inventiveness that we are going to be able to apply through our tools in software, in hardware, in understanding, are going to transform fundamentally what is going to mean, for example, to work. What is going to be required to participate actively in society. And this could be very, very positive. We will be able, we will be empowered to go and measure somebody not from what material possessions his first or second or third generation removed ancestors accumulated uh, through acts of industrial barbarism. But we will be able and measure the worth of those people 
by their active participation in education of themselves and others. It is never too late to pick up a new profession, especially now that our lives are going to be intermeshed worldwide with other societies that we have learned, hopefully, to stop fearing and we start embracing. This advanced collaboration is going to be unprecedented and unprecedentedly difficult, but we have no choice. Once we embrace the different elements of these technologies and the changes that they will bring to our societies, it is conceivable that we will return to a technomadic life. Something that we have known how to live. We have been biologically evolving for walking much, much more to exerting physically ourselves uh, and, and walk or run for miles and miles every day. Our sedentary uh, habits of today are showing on the belly bulges of everybody, including me. And returning to our nomadic roots is not only going to be a lot of fun, it is knowing, not only going to be uh, very effective, but it is going to be also healthy. We do have the perception of living in a strange place and time. And it is true. Whether we measure it from the point of view of the ancient Greeks, or we try and project ourselves almost impossibly to what is going to happen in 10, 100, or 1,000 years from now, or billions of years from now, we understand that it is strange because it is strange to be living. And as we perceive this strangeness, without distancing ourselves from the world around us, but embracing the strangeness that the world projects, we start to understand how to co-evolve. And the tools that we have started to develop are the tools that must be embraced by society overall. This is what you can do. You can think, and you can talk, and you can discuss how these tools are going to impact us because our societies are going to be under extreme strain to adapt. And it is very likely that we will need a new social contract, a new social organization, in order to take advantage of them at their fullest extent, as we probably must. Because, once again, as we start to know everything, as the things themselves start to know everything, after our 10,000-year-long journey, we will be free to be human again. Thank you very much.